Welcome back, Panther fans. I'm David Brown here with Ryan Graham. Hey, y'all. Tim Thurber. Hello. And this is State of Atlanta. <laughs> Says the Tim. Oh, oh, that sounds here, great. <sighs> Happy belated Mother's Day to the mother Panther moms out there. Did you guys uh, do anything yesterday? No, I texted my stepmom, but uh, my mother is dead, and uh, you know, it's an easy <laughs> holiday for me. There you go. There you go. All right. And, I, and, and I'm and I'm in the middle of divorcing the mother of my child. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Mother's Day went got got easy. You know, you got to look for the silver linings. David, how about you? Mother's Day. I will. I. <laughs> You got Kim, Kim, you got your mom Kim traveled for Kim. work last week, and I have realized that I am going to uh, put a moratorium on her travel schedule the week leading into Mother's Day because I got the kids for the entire week, and then I have the kids for the entire weekend. It makes for a long, you know, 11 days, 9, 11 days, you know? So, 9, uh, 11? What? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you put it on my mind here before we started trying. <laughs> <laughs> Nine days makes makes it a makes it a rough nine days. So <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> if anybody wants uh, two or three kids, I've got some I can hand off to you. You have options, easily. multiple options, right? Yeah, yeah. My 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 kids are great. I promise. Just no refunds. That's what the that's what the hospital told me. So, <laughs> all right. How about you, Tim? Did so, you do anything? Uh, yeah, I visited my mom up in Jasper. It was good times. Nice. We had lunch, all that good stuff. Did you get a Jeep? Uh, no, but I drive by it every time I visit her. <laughs> all I know about Jasper is the Jasper, Jasper Jeep, Jeep dealership. Because like every Jeep you see in Atlanta has a Jasper Jeep sticker on it. <laughs> That's the place to go for a Jeep? Apparently. Sponsored I drove by... up there just to look at them once. <laughs> Did you? You were like, everyone buys from here. There must be something to it. It's just a Jeep dealership. There's nothing special about it. It's just really far good, away. Or... I didn't even talk to anybody. I was a kid. I couldn't afford a new car. <laughs> it, it did take them a long time to kind of refill their stock from, uh, I guess, pandemic and everyone was buying cars and everything. Like the lot was just empty for multiple years. Well, I guess that makes sense during the pandemic. You want to have like that, uh, that rag top you can take off and drive around without uh, contracting uh, the plague. <sighs> There was that uh, chip shortage, though, that happened at the same time that was causing a lot of uh, new cars to delay. That's not what yeah. people come to this podcast if for. If a but... car needs a computer chip, it's not a real Jeep. Uh, they all need chips now, David. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Unless you have a really old Jeep, but even then there's probably a chip in there. Yeah. Well, and it just makes the used ones more expensive, too. Yeah. So <clears throat> It was good, though. It was good. Um did you know you have to replace your uh, smoke detectors every 10 years? I didn't know that, but my mom does. So guess what I did? Replace her smoke them. detectors. All of them. Yeah. Nice. Good son. Good son. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, night one of being of Kim being gone this week was I got home after a, a horrible, horrible loss in the championship game of my bocce league. So I'm upset. And then I wake up at like 1.30 in the morning and my kids have come downstairs to watch TV. This is a nice. Monday night, Tuesday morning. So <laughs> shove them back up in the bed and then wake up again at 3.30 with my smoke detector going off because the battery was dying. Mm. And I'm like, you know a way to make your battery last longer? Don't start going off. Like, it was so annoying. I had to yeah, this is basically like it just goes off like a bunch of times forever. And you're like, man, you could just not do that and last a lot longer. Exactly my point. Yeah. You dumb smoke detector, so... It's funny you brought up smoke detectors, Tim. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I got a story for that. All right. So we've George got a, we have a, a, a clarification and oops, we effed up uh, a um, update on the baseball complex, which is not like a issue with baseball. I can like, you don't like have um, mental issues with baseball, like an actual baseball <laughs> sporting complex, a place where you play baseball right. games, a park, so to speak. We put it out there that it we put we put out the most important part. It was important. It's issue. happening. It's happening this year. Groundbreaking this year for the 2026 season. We got that part right. We probably could have stopped at that, right? I, I blame booze. Oh, I never blame booze. Booze is always the answer. 
Um, it's a solution after all. Information. Oh. Disinformation in the state of today, you know. I mean, I could have just told me the wrong answer. Yeah, well, we got we got some information. We got maybe got a little bit of competing information, and we went with the more plausible, the more recent information with you know, being located in the blue lot. Um, uh, well, I guess that's really the only real wrong thing we got, right? That's the only wrong thing. thing. Oh, yeah, we, we, yeah. Had, we had heard that before, and then you know I heard that again, so we just went with that. And it's yeah. not right. It's going to be in the green lot. Hell yeah. It's going to be in the green lot. Same footprint. Well, I say I shouldn't say same footprint. Same Close space to. as yeah. Atlanta Fulton County. We do not know whether it'll be follow that footprint or not. The So what happened was, what had happened was, so what happened was uh, I guess the Board of Regents got their agenda thing or whatever, and it came up that the, the pre-read type thing, and it's going to be that it's up for a vote to approve this whole thing. And yeah, it did include that. It says, was it... Um, includes the footprint of Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. So I'm not sure if it means it's going to be uh, on the footprint or just thereabouts and they're going to make room for softball. Because right now softball is not part of this. It is not. Softball is sticking in, in Panthersville. But uh, it's cool, though. I mean, this is great. This this is what we wanted. We wanted it down there. We wanted it to be in that uh, that blue lot. Or sorry. Yes, blue lot, right? Green lot. Green lot. Green lot. Man, I can't remember. Green is We good. wanted it. We wanted it in Green Lot. We wanted it to be part of the Hank Aaron wall there. We don't know if it'll be incorporated into the actual outfield or whether it'll be a, a just continued to be a memorial outside of it. But that's what we wanted, right? This is a good thing. We 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 set expectations low so that when you find out the the better stuff, you're even more excited about it, right? It'll be interesting to see what the final design ends up being because the picture that's floating out there that's the old render. That's not going to be it apparently. So. There's a design phase coming yeah, the, soon. The, the very last line of that agenda item thing they've got says, with approval, they will move forward with the designs. Like they're they 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 don't they have not finalized what the actual design would be, but they can break ground. They can go ahead and start leveling out the ground, getting fixing it right, fixing the well, ground. Well, I'll everything. let you know. It'll be diamond shaped. Uh huh. There will be an infield and an outfield. There will be some chair seats. Some, it will, will be a sort of princess seating. cut. Four bases. Cut, well, or four, is it going to be four bases? Right. Well, four. No. Four bases. Yep. 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 Maybe a pitcher's know. mound. Ooh, oh, oh, is, is it four? Is it four bases or is it three bases? Three bases and a plate. I don't uh, know. Well, I think those are bases. They're all bases. It's like is a thumb a finger. <sighs> no. <laughs> Ah. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, the, what I'm trying to say though is that. Like there isn't gonna be a crazy design going on here. Like it's gonna be a baseball field. I imagine there's not gonna be a ton of seating. I don't think there should be a ton of seating. There should be like enough, uh, so more than what the, we have now for sure. The thing, whatever it's called, uh, says that Panthersville has 500 seating, and this new place will have a, a thousand seating. Are they counting the grass at Panthersville? Yeah, I don't know because you have like that little place under the press box, and you got a couple of uh, movable bleachers. I'm not sure where they get the 500 from. That's but they said like if, if if what they have is 500, which is the only seating that they really officially have, is right behind home plate. So mm -hmm. just imagine half of that extended on both sides, and I mean that's yeah. it's not a ton of seating. So I don't think you need more. I, I, I really, but I, but I, I really hope whatever plan they go with does allow for expansion of that. Oh, of or. Course. Yeah. Or if not, they make it very um, good for people. It's set up well for people that bring their tailgate chairs and bring out some blankets and some, yeah. some stuff to watch games. I really I like you... that. The chairs and stuff that were out mm -hmm. that are out there and like you can picnic and all that stuff. That's really cool because it's the park, you know, so it's really nice. How do you feel about turf instead of grass? <laughs> That's one of the things I noticed in oh, there. They, they, yeah. they said turf field and I have not done a chance to look up how many D1 baseball fields play on turf? I know one. D1 baseball team. Marshall. <laughs> Marshall. Yeah, they, they, they have a new $25 million, dollars and they have turf. Well, you know, the land in West Virginia is just really you know, not going for what it used to. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so this is a mill, though, right? Is that six, what we got? It's a $16 million dollar 16. budget, but they said that it, the construction costs are uh, uh, expected to be around $13 million. So we know we know that I'll all go up because it always it always, it always does. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I need a, the, I'm, I don't like the idea of turf, 
but if that's something that a lot of uh, Division One programs have been, have been moving forward with, and there doesn't seem to be a problem with it, then sure, fine, that's okay. It, but it sounds weird. I mean, part of well, look as long is, as long as a pitcher only throws strikes, it won't matter. Well, you can throw strikes, but but they can hit strikes. <laughs> no, no, no. As long as he uh, only as long as he just doesn't allow hits, we're good. Yeah. So. <laughs> turf or grass depends on whether or not you, you liking turf depends on whether or not the, the throwing strikes or the only hits people or that are running on the turf are going to be in the outfield. It's not even the running, the running. I don't think anybody cares about running on turf, right? That's not the issue with turf. It's the falling on turf. It's the sliding on turf. It's the, it's still the, only the outfield. Everything right. else is dirt, right? The infield's dirt. Well, the baseline, yeah, is dirt, it's fake yeah, you, dirt. Maybe they put like clay, like a like a like a tennis court clay. That'd be wait, terrible. Wait, you don't need to do I hope fake not. clay in Georgia. Just you just dig into the earth and it's <laughs> clay here. So yeah, you'd be like, you guys wasted your money on that. You know, it's just, just all made of clay, right? Just dig down three inches deeper, and it's all clay to begin with. So yeah, but then they get to the stadium. <laughs> oh, man. Don't dig too deep. We don't want that. <laughs> Let's go like bury like um, a jersey or something in the middle of uh, the fields. So, like they start digging stuff up and they find, oh my God, there's a David Justice jersey here. This must have been from the locker room. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. That would be rad. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would Ryan, be- I r- respect you for keeping the rad thing going alive. I always say I want to bring Brad back and I keep on forgetting to use it. But man, you keep it, uh, you keep it right there on the tip. I like that. Do you feel good about uh, just baseball being there? Did you want that full render? Did you get softball and baseball in one spot? I love the idea of softball being there as well, getting as many sports right there on campus as possible. I did not like it when we saw softball and it pushed the baseball field off of the AP at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium uh, footprint. Uh, but there, there seems to be some, like, I don't know, crap going on with it being softball on one hand you hear that softball likes their setup at panthersville and does not want to move uh but then you hear that it was never part of the plan despite their renderings that it Nobody was spa- it. it was just there to make them feel good or something so <laughs> why yeah can't i don't they know play on the same field the like mentions. i understand they might be a little bit different but like like b- baseball fields at least are not like locked into a certain like you know they they can have they, well, there's wiggle it's, room. It's not it's not the outfield as it is the infield because uh, baseball is 90 foot between bases and I think softball is 60 feet and then your pitcher's mound would throw all of that off completely so you can't play softball on a baseball field. I got it. You can't do and then I don't I and mean, you wouldn't want to come on you don't want you don't want to do that that's like me a track around a football or playing baseball on a football field you don't want to do that crap. So I don't, I don't care if it's a if it's a field that they both can play on why not. I don't care. No. We played football on the converted baseball field. Yeah, but it was. It, yeah. Your your first answer was good. I have no problem with the first answer. So yeah, well, yeah, that just logistically, mathematically, physically it's cannot not, fit. Yeah, it actually doesn't fit into um like what whatever. And I think the, it what really comes are. down to. I think it comes down to the pitcher's mound. That's what it really comes down to. Because you can't really like draw baselines around that differently because it is what it is. Like you can't just move that around. Right. Right. There's right. turf. Right. So. Turf to move. So <laughs> I still want to get the ladies out of Panthersville. It doesn't have to be now. Just they can't they shouldn't be there forever. There does need to be a plan to not only get the ladies, get the softball program out of Panthersville, but also to do it in the proper way so that it's not losing anything from what they have. Because I guess they've got practice fields and things there, Bob Heck. Yeah. Right. And so if they move over there where well, all they've got is just a single softball <laughs> uh uh park or field where they've had so much more before. Yeah, you know, that's that's losing quality. So they need to get the the quality they deserve. That being said, they did win one conference game this season. And did we get confirmation that the coach was fired? Mm, I didn't see anything. I saw a social media post from somebody saying that uh, yeah. that uh, the softball coach had been fired. But I, I looked at the Georgia State website today, and I searched social media. I didn't see no anything updates. else saying that at all. But uh, I guess Charlie does fire people if it's true, though. Well, Charlie, I'm not saying Charlie. Does, no, he fired Freddie. Charlie's sure. never, Charlie's never fired one of his hires before. Was the softball <clears throat> coach his hire? Or no, I don't, no, I'm 90 percent certain that's not the case. So I thought we used so, to be good in softball too, or something like that. 
Oh, we had, when we had Bob Heck forever ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I, the thing about this, ba- I mean, I'm excited about this baseball stadium. We talked about it before, and I, I want to just, you know, talk about it a little bit more while we're here. This is this should start paying dividends immediately, right? Now that it's announced that we're going to have this new baseball complex playing in downtown Atlanta, that you know, right off the highway, right where Hank Aaron used to play, we should be able to start. Like our recruiting should go up from this right now. Yeah, you're not going to play here in 2024. You're not going to play here in 2025. But you you will play your junior year, your senior year. You'll play on this break. You can be part of a program that first team to ever play on that spot since. Chipper Jones and John Smoltz and Tom Glavin and these guys, you're, you're playing right there. That's awesome, right? It is awesome. Kind of makes you feel, though, for the prior players that were promised to play on that field, too, that won't get to. Because that, that's like they the running do an joke. All-star game. Well, Bring you know, well, that's like the, that's yeah. like the, the, tra- Wiffle ball. the trash the trash down south players were promised they were going to FBS for like 20 years and they, you know, had to wait until we gave an opening in our conference to let them in. So mm-hmm. yeah, it sucks, but I think it'll be yeah. cool. We'll definitely see a bump in recruiting for sure. I mean, I, it's got immediately new, fresh, it's, it's, new, shiny. Everyone loves it. Right. I mean, I don't know what it looks like now. I guess there's plenty of time now for the 20, 25 season, Five. Or whatever, but uh, yeah, they, they should, uh, I, I said 2024. We've already finished that, but um, uh, yeah. We should see an immediate bump in recruiting the play guys that want to play there, especially especially Georgia guys, Atlanta guys. Like this has got to be like the hot spot to be able to play. That's a, that's how I would base my entire recruiting pitch. And I've got no idea how to recruit college athletes. I that just, would base everything. I just think our recruiting has been pretty good. It's been I thought, no, that's what I'm saying. It's been solid for the for to be able to get the players we've gotten. Yeah, playing where they have to play. Man, this is awesome. This this should take it up a next not uh, the next notch. We just gotta get a pitcher. Or two. We need, we need we need like relief pitchers. More than one think. pitcher, right? That's yeah. the key. More than one pitcher. Yeah. The season it seemed like we we, we score the shit out of the ball. Yeah, we we beat the hell out of the ball <clears throat> up until the seventh or eighth inning, and then and, and then, then they do. Uh, <laughs> and then they they do because our relief, the relief pitching pitcher just... comes in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we need about eighteen runs a game. We should be fine for every yeah. game. Yeah, fingers crossed, right? Yeah, a lot of points. Well, that that would have uh, that would have helped us beat uh, Coastal Carolina on uh, on was it on Saturday. They scored seventeen. Did we we had eighteen. Rule? We, that a run we would have had him right where we wanted him. Yeah. Is that a run rule? So we do it a run, run rule game. Okay, it, it was run rule. Maybe it was Sunday. We're I forgot. To, I don't have we're, up here. we're supposed to do that to other teams, not the other way around. And Coastal had been on an eight game skid before they beat us, but we did we did get one out of them. We we got one, and now we're at or no, we're hosting Old Dominion this weekend. It ends the the regular season. I what I three read was left. what happened. Three games left: Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We win one, we may make the conference tournament. We win two, we we should most definitely make the conference tournament. Ooh, it's so, not even a sure thing. Yeah, not not a sure thing. Well, hell, I mean, the way they've been playing, I can't I can't imagine why it would be. Yeah, you got to win two or three to kind of solidify. One of three or getting swept won't won't do it in the Sun Belt. So I had an idea with baseball moving down there. Now that you have the the arguably the three biggest sports in co- in college, uh, soccer maybe up there, but uh, baseball, basketball, and football. This is, I think, the time that Georgia State really needs to embrace Summerhill neighborhood and the surrounding neighborhoods, and like make it like the neighborhood thing to do is to come out and watch Georgia State sports, like a um, you know. Uh, buy season tickets to football and you you know or, and basketball and you get free bas- baseball or <clears throat> the neighborhood all gets one dollar tickets to games or you know find something a, a membership thing instead of like buying season tickets you pay a hundred bucks a season a year and you get a, a dollar a game or five dollars a game or something like that just find something to engage the neighborhood make it you know advantageous to come out you know spend your 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 nice days out here bring the family and and just make it the the neighborhood thing to do. Like the people in Grant Park, they just go to the zoo because it's right there. <laughs> Let's go watch Georgia State games because it's right there. They have they have in the past um, sent I think students around uh, to knock on doors and give away tickets to to football games when football. Don't, moved don't in. come knock on my door. Don't don't knock. I'm not I'm not Three's company. Ooh. Don't come knock on my door. <laughs> Well, David, you're saying they should do something for the neighborhood. So what I'm telling you is they they do. 
and right. and I agree with you. And I think that um, they should just do it again. Uh, it was a good good plan. Yeah, I just want to see something that really encourages like the casual walk up things. Like, because yeah. baseball is one of those kind of sports where what are you doing today? I don't know. Oh, there's a baseball game going on. Cool. I'll go sit out in the sun for two or three hours, toss back a couple of brewskis, and and watch a game going on. Just make yeah, it the, bring cooler and a and a and a picnic uh, blanket and. Come hang out. I do like the idea of buy season tickets to two of the sports and get the third one for free. I'll just say one. Let's call it triple pack. I mean, <laughs> all right. Like, look, at, think about our, our basketball arena is gigantic. I mean, just upper deck only, you know, uh, but, but, lim- but yeah. limit it to just the <laughs> limit it to the just the surrounding only. neighborhoods. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, you gotta, you gotta be, uh, yeah. No parking passes. You gotta walk over. Ooh. <laughs> encouraging exercise too i like it well you know I mean, you know the, the thing the cool thing about walking over to sporting event is you get to get your roadie ryan wrong way of thinking about roadie you get your, your right walking way, gear you get your It'd walking be really gear. weird if you're you, walking get there's a roadie nothing better your like, style i meet ryan for tacos at my house all the time and i that's what i do is i you know crack open a cold beer and i drink one while i go to meet him to drink some more cold beer and maybe I, we have I will tacos. say living in this neighborhood with football being walkable has I've I have been more drunk than any other point in my life. Um, <laughs> I've got, made some very poor decisions. You have <laughs> one light to cross. That's it. This I'm like I'm like whatever. I'm just gonna get loaded. Who cares? The only problem you have the o- the only thing in your scenario that stinks is that whole having to walk all your crap back to the house to turn around and walk back to the game. But it also gives you a way to not clean up tailgates. You're like, yep. all right, guys, well, time to pack up for the game. All right, I'll, I'll see you later. I'm going to go home, oh, and, and I'll be right back. It, yeah. It, part of the tailgate is my stuff, though. So I'm cleaning <laughs> it up, and I put it away, and then I leave. And he's got and I, two opportunities for roadies by doing that. That's true. That's true. I crack one open on the way out, yeah. and I crack one open on the way back. Cracking beers, taking names. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's been I great said- and terrible all at once. <laughs> mostly great though mostly great. my liver is going to be oh. very excited to move out of summer hill it's, it's those sunday mornings when you wake up and you're kind of like Ugh. i feel like we probably lost the game but di- oh no we won that's great, it's yeah, great i really game. do get confused sometimes <laughs> or you know multiple times been like oh i puked in my bed great <laughs> oh god now i gotta clean that shit up i had never done that before here and that so <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting older or if I'm just making poorer decisions or a little bit of both. Or uh, maybe your beer selection is bad. Mm. But the beer ch- beers stayed the same. <laughs> Except for when you're at the game and they don't serve PBR. What That's would it take to get? How, how are we going to get PBR served at, at the park? I don't. <sighs> Can we get care. Tropicalia back first? I just want a, a Georgia State beer. I, want, I know I want a Georgia State beer. Now, the now PBR. Is the right colors? I'm just. Saying. Oh yes, it blue is. ribbon. They should invert it, right? You get a blue can with the with a with a white ribbon, but you know. Oh no, a red. The little red underline there. Well, there's red underneath it already. There's the well, there's the red. Uh, well, I can just lift it up. There's the red stripe. Oh, red stripe! I can't. I can't drink red stripe beer. That gives me headaches all the time. <sighs> yeah, it's a, it's not that good. I, I never thought about that before. Yeah. Red stripe. That, they, they should serve red stripe at the at Center Park. I don't. I think I fix. I think I fixate on that red stripe way more than anybody else does. That and schedules. I think you do. I really do. I really yeah. like that. Red that stripe. and schedules. At least you call yourself <laughs> out on it. Falcon schedule coming out on Wednesday, Ryan. Eight p.m. <laughs> right. Really don't care about that. <laughs> Did you know they're the, going to uh, play the Saints twice? They're going to play the Panthers twice. They're going to play the Bucks twice, and true. then they're going to play some other teams. Uh, you you said that incorrectly. Uh, replace play with beat. Yeah. Falcons going to the Super Bowl, just like Georgia State's going to the College Football Playoffs. Sure. This year. No, this is something I was thinking okay. about, man. Like it, the reality actually sank into me. I guess because I never really thought about it under Sean, because you know we could never do anything. This Dell McGee team, this recruiting that I see going on, we'll talk about recruiting another day because it's still happening. No reason to go over it right now because I'm not prepared for it. But we have a legit shot at winning the Sun Belt this year. I feel like we always do. 
But no, not under Sean. We no, we didn't. Did you ever really think that we were going to win the Sun Belt under Sean? I always had a shot, a legitimate shot. Mm, no, I we felt didn't. Like when we started six and one, we had a shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but going into the season, going like which season did we go into? I guess what coming out Ooh. with uh, uh with um a quad like quads uh first Ellington sorry, second yeah uh, after no after Ellington quad showed promise and like we started that season like we were all hype hyped up on on quad and uh Destin Coates is the running back whatever Man. and then uh that that was the only season I remember we're feeling really good about it but like going into this and I know that you know we weren't great we've lost a lot of players and everything last season but I feel like Del McGee's putting something together that different that we've ever seen before at Georgia State and I I legit think that we're playing for the conference championship this year and if we can actually run this this Sun Belt schedule and our out of conference schedule we already know is 4-0 is very very possible we could be the highest ranked G5 program going into the college football playoff and we could actually earn a spot in the playoffs in the first year it's expanded David yeah but there's one other school that we need someone that doesn't exist to help push down Liberty. Yeah. Well, Kennesaw state will take care of them, right? Sure. <laughs> it is way too early for this kind of talk. The blue Kool-Aid you're drinking has got to have extra oomph in it or something. It's it just is way too early. <laughs> I mean, Ryan called me crazy when I said we could get five wins in a row. You're like, we're just going to win the whole damn thing. Forget losing. So you know, we talked about this last week when I did like, that. Um, you know, baby. <laughs> when I did that, when I did that college huddle thing, and we had to walk through the schedule, and I was gonna Marcus is winning every single one of them. I have to get up in here now. I'm getting excited about this. Yeah, and I went through and I, l- looking at that schedule. You know, there's not a game on that schedule that is not winnable. Like tell tell me, is Brian, with his Appalachian <laughs> State, but like tell me tell me a team on the schedule that we cannot beat. There, there. I, I don't know which one we. I don't know which team we cannot beat. And I, and App State's do. We're gonna get them this year. They suck. I feel like we said that every year. For the last they're all weeks. always winnable. I mean, you know. I mean, the Bama was winnable. Oh no, it wasn't. Yes, it always was. Mm. You only the only sure. way it's not winnable is if you don't play the damn game. Okay, Ryan. It's true. Okay. Well, I mean, we would have walked in. I mean. I feel well, like you know, the only the, the only year that you would have said Tennessee was not beatable, but they the, are. the year the year that we uh, that Bama was beatable was the year that they uh, forfeit to us in the COVID year. We would have beaten them that year, and Dude. we still have the record for beating them because they forfeit. They lost all kinds of games, and they could have lost us. Yeah, they lost to Monroe. I mean, all the games are winnable this year. Our out of conference schedule is not. We don't have an Alabama or an Auburn, a game that's on. They're all reachable, but more unreachable. Like we, you know, we, have, we have one catch we have, away from beating Auburn. I know. <laughs> well, we, yeah. we don't. Know. No, no, not even one catch. Protect- we are we are we are one competent ref away from beating Auburn, <laughs> <laughs> and a video review, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, Vanderbilt no. and Tech are definitely beatable games. Like we can beat both teams, and yeah. Chattanooga is our FCS. That's an easy win, right? David UConn, we, 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 Sean UConn had is, no problem with UConn last year. UConn is not a powerhouse. So, yeah, our out of conference is definitely. So, Jimmy Madison us. and Appalachian State are the two biggest roadblocks because we've not beaten either one of them. <sighs> and who's and co- Coastal with the curse? And Coastal with the curse, but F those guys. We're going to beat them this year. We're going to break and, it. Uh, First time ever. We're going to break it this year. We're going to break it. We're going we're gonna to break a lot of records this year. Like, we're going to beat Coastal at home. We're going to beat Appalachian State. Uh, beat jimmy madison who's the we have, we have arkansas state and who's the other uh west coast team arkansas state here texas and we go tech yes, right, we have to go to go to texas. Yeah, your favorite this. school we got this, we got this. <laughs> Tw- 12 and 0 playing for conference championship 13 and 0 going to the college football playoff oh wait college, okay so i said 15 and 0, i was sort of in my head backed off of that and i was like ah oh, they won't invite us to the you know the four no, they it's would. twelve this year. This is the year. It's twelve. Uh, they would. The sun. The, the the Sun Belt champion has could the be. ability to be. Could be as long as they um uh, they're the highest G five. Oh man, so that so. would that would be more than fifteen though. Then wouldn't it? It'd be like sixteen or something. Seventeen. I don't know how many there are. I can't do math. 
Math is hard. It's a difficult subject. Well, I can't visualize that that tournament bracket. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it'd be sixteen, right? That's how it go. Is it just one more? I think it's one more. Yeah, because yeah, it's, 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 it's a factorial, it's a, right? Or not factorial? Top, top four get buys, right? Top four get buys, and then yeah, yeah. So it's right. one more. The other, the other eight kill each other. So we could be sixteen to zero. All right. I had us losing the the. Something. Chip, I don't know. The championship right, so, game. So David, if if we were going into the season right now and Elliot was our still our head coach, what's your thought? Four and eight best case scenario. Out of, we win all the out of conference, we lose all the conference games. <laughs> <laughs> because, no, no, no. Because George no, seriously, you know, if, if if we if, if Coach Elliot was back, I would not feel good about this this team. I, I you know, we we I say don't know six if and six players. <laughs> like with all the people that are gone, I, how much is the? How many players from uh, the Carolinas were in the portal that we could we could uh, we could bring down here? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Do you think that he's like just like just had like a little shuttle bus and like the players would actually live in the Carolinas and he would just drive all the players from South Carolina down to Atlanta every week? Like, all right, guys, just come with me. You can stay home with your your, your uh, folks on the weekend, see the girlfriends and everything. Back and forth, yeah. It's the Elliot, little, Elliot party bus, yeah. That 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 uh, that that uh, car or car money they give him as part of his contract. He's, he used it to buy a little shuttle bus. The, the, the shuttle players back and forth every week. All right, we're, we're talking too much about Elliot. Let's move on. It's a bad joke. Bad yeah. joke. Well, it's it's Elliot too. Let's move on. All right. No, I. Uh, speaking of uh, football and McGee and everything, the NIL that little Give Butter site has been skyrocketing under Elliot. We got we were at, at what ten grand or something like that. We sat at like ninety seven hundred dollars for like Ever. his entire tenure or yeah. something. It popped up to like twenty K, then thirty K shortly after McGee get, uh arrived. It was at forty seven thousand earlier today and two hours later fifty two thousand. He's talking to people. He's he's people finding are, dollars for he's, sure. He's finding ways to pay these players. It's it's a new day at Georgia State. It's a new Atlanta. Hashtag the, new Atlanta. And the players can watch it too, right? They can go to the website and see there is actually money flowing in. They're just looking at their bank accounts. They're waiting for those deposits to go through. They're like, make it happen. Come on, McGee. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Maybe he's teaching uh, Hayes a thing or two about. NIL. Hayes has been getting some players coming in too. We got to talk about that. You know, at some point, I'm, I'm not ready for it tonight, but like there's some players coming in. Like, we just what we need to do is get Ben on to talk recruiting. I, I think that I think that's week. the next step we we need to make. Uh, really, because he's the expert. Tell us yeah, about the top five impact players, Ben. Go. <laughs> I exactly. I hang up and I'll listen. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I talked to Ben last week about coming on <laughs> this week, but I I think it, there's been so much activity still. I want to wait till things start slowing yeah. down a little bit and, and just give we, like an overall because none of us care a ton about recruiting or know too much about it. Like I, I burned myself out on it. I'm like realizing it doesn't always mean a whole lot. So I'm like, eh, I'm not going to put my eggs in that basket. That don't make a lot of sense. So we got, we got lots of players. We got lots of stars. That's all I know. Yeah, no, I mean, it looks on the up and up and, and teams that have good recruiting that tend to have good recruiting also tend to have better seasons, even if there's not like one-to-one, like you can tell which are the impact players and all that stuff. So if, if you have a great recruiting class, you typically typically will have a, a good team later on because of it. Right. Even if yeah. all those players don't pan out, you know? Sure. I mean, it's it'd definitely weird. be good to break up what is transfer versus like high school recruiting. Yeah. I wish I they it's actually... all like one big blur. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish they would like re rank recruiting classes to include the transfers in there so you could see like how you like because like we're, we're like 13th or fourth, right? Like, we're not last place, we're like 13th place in Sunbelt recruiting for this season going into 2024 season. Oof. But it's not taking into account all the transfers we have. That's just on the high school recruits. Got it. Yeah, but everybody else is judged on the same scale too. So it should even out. I know. That's well, I'm not saying, yeah, I know. Here, I'm just saying like our, our high school recruiting was garbage, but like that was. By and large, that was what Sean had put together. So, so they're all from South Carolina. <laughs> they're all or North Carolina, out. all opting out. Yeah, they're all going to <laughs> South Carolina. Good. No, they're not. Which tells you something too. Albert Wilson retired. <sighs> God, 
Do you feel old? It makes me feel old. (laughs) (laughs) We watched him. It is freshman year. First year uh, of Georgia State football running a uh, kickoff back for a touchdown over there in uh, Tuscaloosa. That was fun to watch. That was like the one good highlight of that game. And like, you know, he was like, uh, like uh, un- unassumingly like good in the NFL. Like you didn't really see a lot of highlights of him in the NFL, but he was good. Like uh, Ben posted something. He uh, ranks in like um, some rank receptions, yards after something like top 30 in the NFL. It's ridiculous. How many seasons did he play? I think it was seven, six, seven, something like that. Because he got injured and then he sat a COVID year. But the the, the, the little write up that he did, or the, the, he talked about how like his goal, once he made the NFL, his goal was three years. And then he was five wow. years in and he's like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm, you know, still doing this. And then, you know, things i didn't realize this i th- i thought when he was done with miami he was done he bounced around he was like uh yeah the the raiders and somewhere that's, else as well i missed that i missed that he went there so that's, that's where you go that's See, where you go before you retire right it's the raiders that's we should have known that was definitely that was definitely the case for a long time like that the average age of the raiders had to be close to 30 there for a while they they were they were old yeah they were not known for their young standout players but it's kind of falcons playing at raiders at some point this year we'll find out on wednesday my, my vegas trip i, I can imagine you're booking that trip oh my God. that this one as soon as they announced as soon as the raiders announced they're moving to vegas i'm like i looked at the future schedules and i'm like yeah i'm going to that game what, what i haven't been to like vegas to in like I haven't been to Vegas in like 10, 12 years or something. So I got to go for that. It's definitely All changed. Right. I can say that much. Missouri State getting a call up from Conference USA to join the FBS ranks. Mm, what do you think of that? Good for them. And I'm good for Conference USA. Continue watering down FBS. <laughs> they they, they, invite, uh, there... invite them all. All the teams. Just invite the entire FCS to Conference USA. <laughs> they'll stick around for a little bit maybe <laughs> yeah missouri state's been on the list for a little while of uh potential move ups I, I mean i think when we moved up they were they were rumored to be like on on short lists and stuff so um i you know that it makes a lot of sense that they would pull them up i think they sound they, better than they sound better than some of the teams that join conference usa i think missouri state turned down sunbelt um and that's why we went to Coastal Carolina. I think that's okay. how Coastal got in. Was Missouri State turned it, turned the the Sun Belt down? Which, it's another man, state school, which is nice. You know, it's, it's not so I, bad. I, I I can't hate on State University. That's always good. My biggest fans, but yeah, no, um, like State State, not just not like Rando State, but like oh yeah, like actually State Blue Mountain State. 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 Uh, although I'll take Blue Mountain State. No, 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 no. I will drop Texas State as my second favorite team if we can get Ooh. Blue Mountain State into the conference. <laughs> aren't they just aren't they Boise? Effectively. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah. I, I will be happy that on the on the Sun Belt message board, I don't have to read about everybody fawning over Missouri State as a call up. But I don't want the Sun Belt to call up teams anymore. Like no, I don't, I don't want any conference to call up more teams. We don't need more teams. It's right enough. Yeah, also, for sure. The well, conference, you, look at, you look at Conference USA right now, and I don't know where the... I, obviously, I know where Kennesaw is just by living here, but it, just take somebody that is from Ohio and have them look at the Conference USA roster. They don't know where these schools are. Where's Kennesaw State? Where's... I, I guess you assume Sam Houston's in, in Texas, right? But like Jacksonville State, they, I'm sure they think that's in Florida. You know, they're, 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 no one knows who these schools are. <laughs> the people probably do think Jacksonville State's in actually Jacksonville, Florida. Why wouldn't they? I mean, <laughs> I mean, so honestly, there's, there's, if, if the trend continues and there is a split at the top, like we've, like you, you guys have been saying, I'm trying really carefully to be like, I haven't been saying this right. <laughs> then there's, 
I mean, I haven't. I, I and I I don't think it's going to be as big of a break as what you guys have been talking about. But but if if it did happen, there would definitely be a lot more of a meld of the top of the FCS and the bottom and and the G five programs um, moving forward at, just to fill in the ranks. But it would make a lot of sense, right, to to pull in some some of the, the top of the FCS because a lot of them, when they split, maybe didn't have the budgets. But there's a bunch of FCS programs that have the budgets now. Well, so now, now now you've got Delaware and you've got uh, Missouri Richmond. State paying, paying five million dollars oh. to join FBS, which I've asked the question in multiple places and no one's Where's giving me an answer. From? Where does that five million dollars go? Does it go to the NCAA? Does it go to the conference? You know. How do I get to ESPN? How do I get this? How do I get part of this five million dollars? I will. How I will do definitely you personally get part of it. Yes, I want the money. <laughs> <laughs> you should write a letter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, strongly worded. I demand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Demand I would. I don't. Yeah, where would that go? Because it's the NCA that put the five mil in place, right? Yeah, and it used to be like five thousand. I'm like, and I, and I could see five thousand dollars. All right administrative cost on doing the paperwork okay sure whatever yeah five million dollars there may better be some admins spending the off season and like bora bora or some crap like that if they just got a one thousand one thousand no one thousand percent raise yeah that's somebody's well, bonus it goes into some other fund that they don't even know or track it probably goes to the sec I was going to say it goes straight to <laughs> Alabama, Texas, Georgia, uh, Oregon. Whoever the, the college football playoff winner is, they, they get that State, Notre the Dame. move up. The move up oh, money. It goes to Notre Dame. What am I talking about? Yeah. Because yeah. Well, <laughs> they, I mean, they get everything. They're, they're like well, weird. They're like independent. And they just get everything. They're just like, whatever. We just want it. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can have it. The Lord has spoken. So. <laughs> But speaking of Ryan, speaking of what you're talking about with the, the split, the the Iowa State AD this week came out making a statement about how. Um, oh, they're not in. It. They didn't make the cut. Well, but just talking about like they said like everybody in the SEC and the Big Ten should have like their head over their shoulders, like looking like behind them what's going on because he was re- uh, talking about you know this kind of. Um, the same that same same thing happened in the NFL, the NBA. I get the the NFL and the AFL merge, and you don't need two commissioners making six million dollars a year. So you got one, and so he sees like the the conference is just kind of like absorbing each other, getting rid of people, saving money that way, making more money. And then the next step in that logically is why are you spending money on Vanderbilt and Northwestern? when cool. you could keep all that money to yourself. So he's this so this Iowa State uh AD is already talking about this separation of the, that top 30, 40, 60 teams. So is he talking uh, about his team getting cut cuz they're not making it in whatever happens later. I he didn't say he he did not reference what's going to happen with Iowa State directly. He was just talking about teams in the Big 10 the SEC should really be looking over their shoulder about what's happening right now because there's going to be some teams that are not going to be part of that infrastructure going I mean, forward. A lot of the big, I mean, probably the, I mean, most of the big 12 might not get into the next thing if they make it mm-hmm. smaller as far as if it's just, you're talking about big 12, big 10 and the I, SEC I merging. I want to see the big teams break off just do it pull the band-aid and do it now and the fewer teams that go along with it the better if it's 30 or 40 teams that's fantastic because you know there's a lot of historical programs that are not making that cut like your your mississippi sec teams your mississippi state your ole miss those teams are, are not making that cut so now they're looking for a home you're going to have conferences all in flux teams joining here creating legacy conferences trying to keep the big guys still together but they're not part of the big stuff it's going to be wild wild west out there and it's not going to happen some folks thankfully, say hey we're thankfully P- P1 we have now p1 thankfully we have an athletic director that'll be right there on the precipice of the whole thing and we'll McGee? uh ad mcgee yeah, ad mcgee yeah. <laughs> 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 They'll be like, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start a brand new conference and only sp- certain teams can join us. That's it. We That's need to get some kind of logo made for a shirt that it's basically AD McGee or Coach McGee 
telling, giving Charlie his marching orders. Like, all right, Charlie, this is what you're going to do today. <laughs> you mean his assistant? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> assistant to the head coach. Athletic director, assistant to the head coach. <laughs> Yeah, not assistant head coach. Oh yeah, assistant to the head coach. That's great. <laughs> assistant to the head coach. <laughs> oh man, I need to watch the office later. Uh, although it is it is funny because thinking about it, because uh, Coach McGee, not a tall man, and and Charlie, very tall, a very tall man. I just want to see McGee just like laying into him <laughs> as, he, uh, as he looks up to him. <laughs> ADP Ooh, for president. president from the from the <laughs> chat. All right. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, good. Um, they even had that pulled up. I was looking at y'all's ugly ugly faces the entire time. So, yeah. All right. Let's see. Um. All right. I got one last thing. We're already at forty six minutes. One last thing. I thought this was funny. This is hilarious. The funniest thing I've seen in college football this week was an article came out about how teams are tampering in the transfer portal era without tampering. Wait, what? They're tampering? Without what? Tampering. tampering without tampering. But what? they're still tampering. Right. They start they'll start following kids on social programs will start following kids on social media uh -huh. and they'll start liking all of their posts. And then if they get likes back, then they know there's a mutual interest and that's where they pr proceed from there. So now, it's now literally we're like a, into those DMs. Do you want to go to prom with me? Hi like yes, no, maybe. It's like high school dating. It this is this is people's jobs. They're paid to like high school date college athletes. Yeah. This is awesome. Why do you think I stopped <laughs> covering recruiting? It was super weird, man. I was like because you, you weren't getting enough maybes, you were just getting no's. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Turn to uh, turn down for those special interviews. It was just weird. Yeah, no, it was super awkward. Like, uh, cause it did feel like a little like chasing down teenagers, which it is. Yeah. Why so do like, schools you know, even care right now? It's not like the NCAA is gonna do anything anymore. They have no power. <laughs> you have no power here. They really I have know. no power. They're just there now. I know I'm there with you, Ryan. Like the whole like talking to recruits, I, I just I, I gave up talking to teenagers in my 30s. So, probably a good idea. <clears throat> probably that a good idea. Funnier. Pretty funny that was. All right. Damn, right? So, we're not going to talk about some article that you read? Or is that the article you read? We could, we could last call that. Yeah. Let's oh, last the article. That, no, that was the article was the, the uh, Iowa State. Oh, uh, okay. I thought there was like yeah. some real smoke about what's going to happen. Oh, I thought God. there was until I actually read it. So. Yeah, yeah, and Iowa State, they don't know because they're not included. They're still better than a lot of programs out there. I know, but they don't know because they're not included. And, and, and be they're like a state. Vanderbilt AD being like, oh, hey, and I'm like, ah, you're not in that meeting, dude. And they are <laughs> state name university. State That's name true. state university. We should so. just do a whole conference of that state state conference. So it's Georgia State, Louisiana State, uh, Florida State, Grambling State. Texas no, wait, State. No, Gram Grambling's not a state. They can't be included. Uh, who else? We get Te Texas State, Texas Missouri State. State. Yeah. Welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome to the show, boys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, or, or do a do a conference of uh, actual real states versus fake states, like your Appalachian and Kennesaws. <laughs> we could never <laughs> say go state ever again. No, it is difficult. That, that that is a problem with the state names and the tech names. Like I, I think I've said it here before. I, I went to a Georgia Tech versus Virginia Tech game, and I'm like, who thinks going to win? Like Tech. I'm like, mm, I need more information. This is not going to work <laughs> which, out well for me. Which one of the techs? <laughs> tech. <laughs> the one with the ugly colors. I still don't know what you're saying. So yeah. Mm. All right, Ryan. Before we get out of here, week one. Who did the Falcons open with? Is, and is it home or away? Uh, are we talking preseason or are we talking <laughs> preseason? Is not even real football. All right. Well, I, I'm just being, you know, uh, Week one. it is a home game. A home game against? Against the Saints. The Bucks. Home game against the Bucks. Okay. Was I right? Rumors have Steelers. Rumors oh, have you don't Steelers. know. I, see. I don't know. Yeah, we usually don't. You don't play division. You don't play your division rivals early. Uh, right? I think we have. I think we. It depends. I think uh, there was a Dallas guy talking, a uh, Cowboys guy talking today. He's like, "Please don't give us the Giants in Week One." 
again. So it, it happens. I just happens. I just figured um, you play those teams twice. So if I pick one of those, then I have more of a chance than if I picked someone else. It's more of a last call conversation, but I think that the NFL should do should book in the season where you play your uh, division games at the beginning of the season and then the other half of them the back end of the season mm. and then you play all your out of division games in the yeah, middle yeah, of it. Yeah, you play one one in the beginning and one at well, the end. Well, it's like, you know, I, yeah, it makes sense. I, I want to establish dominant or I want a team to establish dominance at the beginning of the season so you already know who's in the lead on your division standings and then you go, what is it, eight, nine weeks and you and you play all your out of division. When you tweak and you division. make adjustments, you come back <laughs> and then and you, you finish it again. off. Yeah. yeah. And, and and I'm okay with week one being a wild card where it can be like we don't start the division games until week two. We have our big, huge start off games, your Super Bowl team playing. Uh, this uh, Chiefs are hosting the Baltimore. All right, cool. I this saw is, that. Yeah. This morning. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Chiefs all right, and cool. Ravens, which is great. We can we can go on more, more about all this kind of stuff in the last call. Hey, Tim, you want to take us out oh, of here? We can do that too. Yeah. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. We're going to take a quick break and restock the beverages heading over to last call. If you liked what you heard, or if you didn't consider joining our Patreon anyway at patreon.com <laughs> forward slash state of Atlanta, they get live streaming access to last call discounts on our sweet merch, all the group chat action. You can handle and more $5 a month fan of the show. That's all you need to give us to keep us moving. Say goodbye guys. Goodbye guys. Peace. Ooh, it dinged. What dinged? <laughs> it 